Hey, this is Miracle Max. Welcome to Rise of Civilizations. Uh, this is our Let's Play series, and this is Episode 2, so welcome back. If you were with me for Episode 1, you saw that uh, we left off with our City Hall upgrading to 5. I followed up that video with a 10 goals for beginners in this game, and during that episode, we went ahead and got a lot of our City Hall 5 upgrades done. So, offline today... I upgraded my city hall to level six. Very exciting for me. Now, let's just first talk about the three things that happened when we went up to city hall level five. Uh, the first thing that happened is our troop dispatch queue went up to two at city hall level five. What this means is now, instead of just being able to send out one group of troops, and we'll go ahead and tell some troops to go out and here, we'll just, oh, can't do that. Sorry about that. If you look over on the side, it now says Q, and my Q is 2. So I can actually send out two groups of troops at the same time doing two different actions. Uh, this makes us progress a lot faster in the game. And I don't have enough troops to really send two groups out to do much, but for right now, we'll send two groups out to go get a little wood for us while we take care of other things in the game. So let's go ahead and head home. And... Because I'm now at City Hall level 6, I have a couple new buildings I can build. A farm is another resource. We already have two farms on our property, so let's build that third one. And I also have a courier station. A courier station is a new item for us in the game. So let's drop that down, let it build, and explain what it does. And we have our nice tour lady to tell us uh, what's going on but the mysterious merchant appears when our courier station has been built and she comes and goes and when she's here she offers different items to us at a discount some of the items are available for gems others are available for either corn or wood in the upper corner of each of these items is a little banner that gives our discount and I'm always looking for the gold banners Gold banners appear at a 50% off discount, and purple are for anything below 50%. So at this point in the game, there's nothing I really want to buy, but I just wanted you to be able to see that. All right, and I have two builders that are free right now in the game. Um, the other thing that happened at City Hall Level 5 is I obtained a second scout. So that fog on the map that we want to clear, where right now we're at 3%, 3.42%, we can now clear a lot faster. And if you watch my uh, 10 goals for beginners, you'll see um, the bonuses of being able to send out scouts and what they pick up on the map. One of the things that they pick up on the map is research items for us. And I had let you know that it's important to only work on the military technology in the research lab and this is why during my first two days in the game I have done all the research you see here that means I've put together the resources to do it and taken the time to do it on my other tab I've done nothing and yet I have 11 items done one quarry five irrigation and five hand saws and that all came from tribal villages I found on the map so 11 things done for free, and that's a great reason, if nothing else, to keep scouting your map. Let's close that out. The third thing that happened when we went to City Hall 5 is we added one more troop type. And the fifth, fourth troop type we added is, is a siege machine. And the best use of, of siege machines in this game is to go out gathering. So I've gone ahead and upgraded that to level 5. Uh, at my city hall level five so that I can train troops faster. So if you see, I have all my types of barracks training troops and I do that all of the time, keep them busy. The other thing I wanna keep busy all the time is my research. Sorry, that's upgrade. Let's keep it busy. And like I said, I'm focusing on military. I'm gonna let the game give me as many freebies as it wants to. Uh, this one here increases the attack of cavalry units by 2%. So we'll get that research started. And remember to always ask your alliance for help anytime you start anything in the research lab. And they will help speed up the time that it takes to do this. All right, my tavern 
now that it is level five at City Hall five gives me four free chests every day. So I want to make sure to keep that upgrading and I have a builder free now so let's get that upgrading and that will cut down the amount of time it takes for me to get a free golden chest and also keep me on the road to getting another free silver chest and it looks like my next free silver chest happens at level eight and that'll get us to five free a day so that's exciting so let's get that upgrade going and again the little handshaking above it means I'm asking for help while I'm asking for help I'm gonna keep giving help to other players also alright we have our Alliance Center and if you remember our Alliance centers tells us how many times we can get helped right now I'm at nine and if I upgrade it to level six which I can at City Hall six I will be able to do uh, get help ten times on every single thing I upgrade so let's go ahead and get that started too okay exploring 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 you know at some point in the game the fact that we're constantly sending out explorers can be a real pain and so I have a little trick for you that I want to show you and it's a way to send your explorers out for a longer period of time where they will explore more area and uncover more things with for you without you having to constantly click on the button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll out on the map as far as I can. And if you look at your governor profile picture underneath that, it shows a check mark by alliance. And that is where our alliance buildings are. I'm going to change that to explore. And a little menu open below and it shows um, little icons for uninvestigated and investigated uh, caves and also tribal villages. So if I go out as far as I can on the map, what I'm looking for is instead of seeing green icons, I want yellow icons. And if we look right here, there's a tribal village that we haven't touched yet. And I'm going to go ahead and take that research speed up. Thank you very much. But what I'm really looking for is a cave that's off in the distance that I can send a scout for. So let's look and see what we can find here. And maybe we'll get lucky and find a scout and be able to send and find a cave we can send our scout out for a much longer trip. And when you do this, the scout does all the work and you sit back and wait for the reports to roll in. Of course, because I said that, I am not seeing one. I thought I left one behind for us. Ah, there's one. Okay, so if you see down here, there's a cave. And that cave has not been investigated yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and send out a scout to head to that. And it says it will take the scout 17 minutes to get here. And that's just fine by me. Because what's going to happen is that scout is going to have to make a path from where we are now all the way to that point on the map. And we are up in this area. So our scout is actually going to clear the fog from between where we are and that cave. And anything that's in its way is going to show in our menu. All right, we're going to let him go do his job and get back to the city. All right, important things to do in the city every day. If we go to our quests and objectives. I've got some items to claim. Uh, things that I finished and if you're ever bored and looking for something to do in the game they provide you a list of things to do all the time it looks like I unlocked something up at the top okay so I'm gonna collect everything that is offered to me and you will find you spend a lot of time in the game claiming rewards which is just fine with me the other item we want to look at, the other tab, is our daily objectives. And it's important you finish this every day. And the reason for that is in this last chest up top, when you finish and unlock that, you're getting gems, a golden key, a magic box, and an epic commander sculpture. Those are valuable items. So let's go ahead and claim that reward and see if we unlocked it. We did. Very nice. And those will be put in our storage. Now one thing I wanted to make sure to do with you guys today is I've accumulated a few keys over the first day. 
and I want to open them with you and let's see what commanders we can unlock. Alright, so that is a function of the tavern, so we're going to go in here and open keys. We have 10 silver and 5 gold keys to open. So we're going to start with the silver. Um, if you're curious at what rewards are available underneath the gems in the upper right hand corner, there is a rewards list that shows you what rewards are available in gold chests and which rewards are available in silver chests. And you can click on any of these items to get a description of what they are. All right, so let's just see what we get. Here we go. All right, we've got some stars, and I'll explain those when we do a commander upgrade, speed ups, and tomes of knowledge. Open another one. We have some resources, stars, and speed ups, tomes of knowledge, resources, stars. These silver chests don't give you much bang for your buck, but if they're going to give them to, to me for free, I'm going to be excited. And then I say that when you un we unlock a new commander, to, to Moe Gosen. And she is a good commander to use as a secondary commander. And when we are ready to build her, I'll do a video on her. So let's confirm that and go ahead and open another one. And now we're getting some city keeper sculptures. Lancelot sculpture. Tomes of Knowledge, Buildup, and Resources. Just more of the same stuff. Some Joan, One Joan of Arc statue. I, she's a character I really like in this game, so I'm always excited to have her show up. All right, that was our silver. Let's see if the five gold will give us anything exciting. Opening our first one, and we have Commander Sculptures for Sarka, who is a good gatherer in this game, and Gaius Marius, who is also a good gatherer. Our second gold key gives us more Sarka and two Cleopatra. Cleopatra is actually the best gatherer in the game. She is also a good support commander. And again, when we get to opening and building commanders, we'll do videos on each of them. Pelagius is a below average commander. So we're going to not care that he's there right now. All right, let's open another chest. And we unlock Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc is the best support commander in the game. So we're going to be excited to build her. We received two Kusunoki Masashige sculptures. He's a good nuker. And we have two more to go. All right. Looks like we've got more Joan of Arc sculptures. And the last one, some Yulji Mundiok. He is an okay nuker. And some Sunse sculptures. He is a very good nuker. And I'm throwing around all these terms, nuker, support, uh, gatherer, and I know they can be confusing. So let's do a video where we describe what the different types of commanders are and what you use them for. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on my list right now so that I follow through on that promise to you. How about that? All right, commander types. Sorry. This is off the cuff. It's 12.30 at night, and I just don't want to forget anything. All right, that is all of our keys. I'm happy with those, and we'll go ahead and close out on that. Looks like while we are doing that, we unlocked five more rewards. And we've got one up in the counter. Now, this menu up in the upper counter, and it's the piece of paper with the number red the red number one next to it. This is the current events going on in your kingdom. And if you um, want to earn extra rewards, the events listed in here are great ways to pick up extra rewards. The first event everyone goes through in the kingdom is the Rise of Civilizations event, and it lasts the first week that you're in the kingdom. It has objectives for each of the first five days, and you have the full week to complete all of these objectives. So go ahead and flip through them, and it's a good way to learn more about the game. We also have a Hero's Return. Uh, this is part of the Rise of Civilizations event. This is a way to cash in some special tokens you can earn. We have the Who Will Reign Supreme event. This event is to encourage us to power up quickly. It's difficult to do if you're a free-to-play player, um, but you do get rewards as you power up. 
and there's golden keys for really powering up. Unfortunately, we are a long, long way away from one and a half million power. Um, the last event going on right now is the Arab Breakthrough, and that stays for the whole game. And this earmarks different City Hall levels and gives you a bonus for reaching them, all the way up to the top City Hall level of 25. Alright, you can get some gems for hooking your account up to Facebook. And the very bottom one is an event that is five days away, and we'll talk about that when it gets here. So I'm going to recall my gatherer so we can do a few barb attacks really quickly before we go. And every day that you're online, you're going to want to use up all the action points you have on barb attacks. Now, I'm not going to do them all today because I actually have a full action point bar, um, but I am going to do a few and show you one little trick when I do them. So the commander that we chose to be our starting commander was Boudicca. She is right here, and she is now a level 8, and she is who we're going to use to go out and attack barbarians. Now, I unlocked a special talent in her tree here on day one, and it's the insight talent, and it reduces the action points we use to attack by 10. So a normal commander takes 50 to go attack barbarians. She is only going to take 40. But I'm going to show you a way to make her take even less than that. So if we go out onto the map and we select some barbs, and I'll just pick a we'll go level six, looks like, yeah, level six barbarian troops. And I'm going to send out an army to attack them with her as the commander. I have 12,000 units that Boudicca can take with her. That's a great number. And if you see next to that, it says action point cost 40. So I'm going to march her out in the field and we're going to go attack these barbarians. Now, I didn't pay attention to how far away it was, but it doesn't look like it's very far. So as you're picking barbarians to attack, remember that the higher the level they are, the harder they are to attack, but also the more rewards that you will get from attacking them. So we're going to go ahead and take on this level 6. Right now in the kingdom, level 7 is the highest we can go. So I'm going to let her defeat the barbarians, and I'm going to click on her while that battle is going on. And when it finishes, I'm going to hit the camp button. I'm going to use my magnifier and select another group of level 6 barbarians. And when I click on them and hit attack and choose her, if you look at the action points required now, it's only 38 instead of 40 to attack. And this number will continue to drop until it reaches 30 by two at a time as I keep her out on the battlefield. So my goal is to, once I have my commander out attacking, I want to keep that commander out there and attack as many groups of barbarians as I can in a row. And this allows me to stretch my action points from 40 per attack down to 30 per attack. And over the course of 1,000 action points, um, that is going to add another 10 or so attacks, depending on how often you need to return to base to heal up her troops and bring her back out. When Boudicca is attacking, the white bar next to her shows her overall troop health. How many of her army is still alive? We're going to have to camp them. Search again, level 6, and go attack her. So right now, of that original 12,000 troops we sent out, 10,745 are still healthy enough to attack. Some of those units that we lost of the from 12,000 to 10,7 were slightly wounded. They can't attack, but they don't need to go to our hospitals. Others of them were seriously wounded, and they are waiting for us in our hospitals to train. So let's go ahead and have her attack. And it's, I'm going to camp her so that when she's done, she'll just sit right there. Great, and we'll go back into our city real quick. Our hospitals now have the uh, Red Cross symbol above them, so let's click on that. And those are the total number of troops that I have that are wounded. My hospital can handle 16,000 wounded troops at once, so these 65 aren't going to hurt me, but we're going to go ahead and heal them and ask for help healing them. 
You can do that at any point in the game. It's important to never have more wounded troops than you have room in the hospital. If this occurs, the extra troops die. So we want to make sure we stay below that level. And again, my hospital right now, each hospital has a capacity of 8,000. If I click on one of them and hit heal, it shows me under the hospital bed that right now I have zero out of 16,000 beds being used, which is fine by me. All right, we'll go back out and see what Boudicca is doing. Let's squeeze in one more attack so you can see those action points fall. And then we'll jump back in and see how our scout is doing. All right, looks like we're now down to 36 points to attack instead of the full 40. We'll march her over here. on the talent tree for this commander, which will explain as I build her up, one of the talents you can build for her is an increased march speed, which really helps in moments like this where she is crawling across our map. All right, let's engage there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit camp. You don't have to wait till the battle's over. You can do it at any time by clicking on your commander. And that just parks her there so that I don't have to have her go home and then revert to 40 action points per attack. So I'm going to go home while she's camped there and go to our mail. And I'm looking for our exploration point. Okay, I sent one scout out and this is the list of things they have found so far. And that is an insane number of things for that one click of explore. And I'll go through and select each of these and collect it. But if we go scroll out on our map again, if you remember that scout was heading uh, southeast and there's the path that that scout uncovered with one click. And he's still going trying to get to that little cave down there. So again, that little trick of zooming out and selecting explore on your map um, gives you this option where for one click you can uncover a whole lot of buildings. Alright, we'll go home and I'll collect those on my own time. I don't want to keep you here. Um, one little pointer to uh, cover with you before I leave today. You might be moving faster me than me in this game and I have been pausing to try and get as much information as I can into these videos. There are a couple things you want to remember. Number one, don't teleport. You want to save your beginner's teleports for day nine when we jump kingdoms. Number two, no matter what you do, do not start the upgrade to City Hall 8. You want to stop at City Hall 7 and wait for the jumping of kingdoms. And I'll give you a little preview of what that looks like. So if I scroll way out on the map, in the bottom corner is our world picture. And this is a list of all the kingdoms that there are. Right now we're in kingdom 1157. If I wanted to move our troops to kingdom 1158, it says right now that I can teleport there. And if I click the teleport button, these are the requirements to teleport to a new kingdom. City hall lower than eight, owning at least one beginner's teleport, having all your troops in your um, village, and not in any alliance, so we'll quit alliance. But the, the two first ones are what's key. And when we do get to the point of jumping kingdoms, and that will be a video, uh, we wanna make sure that we have not violated the first two. The third thing that isn't on this list is you can only teleport within the first 10 days of your account. So we wanna make sure we do this within the first 10 days. So I am not gonna teleport. I'm just fine in the kingdom we're in for right now. We'll go back home and I have some collecting to do and I have some, I, it looks like I have one more explorer to send out while the other guy is still going way far away. So we'll send him out. All right, that's gonna be it for this Let's Play. Make sure again, use up all your action points. Get out on that map and attack barbarians and um, get your scouts out exploring. Go out into your map, 
click that explore tab and find some yellow caves far away and send them out on a journey. I hope you liked this video. If you did, like it. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet to this channel, I sure would love to have you. And if you have any thoughts on this video or any suggestions, please leave a comment. I always reply to them and I'm always looking for video suggestions. If there's something you want to know about this game, I can answer you privately or I might take your idea and use it for a video. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great day.